World Cup ushered us into the box fighting meta out of necessity. And in chapter two, it has just gotten stronger. If you're not up to date with your box fighting and not making it a main focus priority, you have most likely fallen behind. Box fighting is simply the safest and most efficient way to fight in Fortnite with third parties looming around every corner. During World Cup and after some timing changes with the initial build placement, players like Booga, Clicks, Aspect, and Dubs started dominating with their realization that with their ping, they can get up close and force the issues. One development that they immediately started capitalizing on that other players didn't was their unmatched peace controls not just their wall taking abilities i talked about that in my video on booga directly after the world cup how he took every extra wall every extra building piece today i'm going to go a little bit more in depth on that concept so we're going to take a look at the peace control of two of the most winningest players in chapter two unknown army and benji fishy before we do that, let's define peace control and look at some very basic examples. Peace control is where you are placing the building pieces so that your opponent cannot. Basic concept, but it's more than just controlling the one wall in front of you. Although that is the most basic example. The concept that I'm gonna drive through to you in this video is that you wanna take every building piece possible so that your opponent cannot do anything to stop what you are trying to achieve. It's not just during box fighting or fighting in general that this is a thing. This is even a thing during end game rotations when you're not even looking for a frag. You're just trying to move ahead of the zone. I think actually in one of my very first videos about build fighting meta, we started predicting that you should always place a cone and a floor when advancing or blocking because players are gonna get very good at reacting. Well, that happened. Players are ridiculously fast at placing that cone if you don't place it or placing that floor if you don't place it, but even taking it another step and maybe even another step in some cases by placing a wall and maybe even a stair. There's so many layers to peace control that you need to be aware of. When you think about a basic triple edit, the whole reason that's a thing is so that you block them from blocking you. You take the pieces before they do. Now that we've covered the basics, let's talk about the players that I mentioned earlier. After we do that, we're gonna talk about specific ways to practice your peace control, so stick around towards the end of the video. Unknown Army is one of the best W keyers and mid game fighters in the world, period. One of the reasons is his unmatched peace control, no matter what input he's playing. I took these clips that I'm gonna show you today from the second week of January Cash Cups where he was actually playing on mouse and keyboard. Now, I don't wanna attribute everything to his peace control because as I've said before, he has some of the best angles, pre-firing and awareness in the game. I also wanna caution you guys not to go full out speed trying to take every single piece. This is how you get 200 pump to the face or get P90 sprayed with no recovery because you're not actually reacting to your opponents. Take it slow and react. You don't have to always be like Mr. Savage here, even though this exemplifies exactly why peace control is so good. By the way, he did that whole sequence in two seconds. That's what I call quick debt. Okay, okay, Bala, we get it. Get to the point. How do we actually do peace control? Let's start looking at the elements. First and foremost, we need to highlight building and edit flow. You need to be able to hit edits in between placing structures and you need to be hitting these edits fast. This is why I think having fast edit speed like Raider is actually an important skill and not just purely to show off. Speed in this case is the difference between your opponent instantly losing the fight or escaping. Second, movement. I'd say this is equally important. The biggest mistake when people are speeding through an edit course they're building on someone is that they put themselves in an unrecoverable positions. When I cautioned earlier, this is what I'm cautioning about. If you end up right on the wall, but you make the edit to finish him and realize he's right up on your wall and now he phases through and you can't block him, you're quick dead instead of him. Getting P90 sprayed to death after you dominate someone like that is the worst feeling ever and your movement will be what will get you out of those situations. Thirdly, Something very similar, you gotta be able to read and predict your opponent. This goes hand in hand with the movement, but it's even on the scale of making sure you see where he's going so that you can block him. Peace control is useless if you're just randomly spamming builds and edits. Also, you need to be able to react quickly to the counter plays he has when he has peace control. Finally, you got to know the building grid. You have to know the distance you can place structures from and the angles you have to look at to do so. Sometimes it's useful to make an edit to place extra walls and then reset before continuing. But if you can't do that instantly because you're fiddling where you have to put your crosshair in order to place the building, you lose the speed that you need and you open yourself up to danger. So for each example I show now, I want you guys to think specifically about these four attributes and note how the pros were using each one. 
First, this example of unknown in early game is an example of a lot of different things. To me, this is a wonderful showing of good movement, reading your opponent, and knowledge of the building grid. Let's back it up for a second though and consider what most people would do once they set themselves up like unknown. They would go for the first shot and place a wall for sure. Would they have been able to get that right wall or would they have to place the one closer in their box? Probably the one directly on their right. Good knowledge of the building grid and being able to reach the one all the way to the right where he put it is important. But from here, that'd be it. It would edit whichever wall and then the guy would go behind his stairs and it would be a stalemate or a classic box fight. Unknown, however, goes for more. He edits the left wall, places the cone, and gets the very difficult middle wall in that box. From here, the fight is over unless somehow the player is able to retake one of these walls, but even then, there's still room for Unknown to just move to the other wall. So this is what I mean. Unknown places this guy in an unrecoverable situation just simply by good piece control. Let's watch the movement again real quick to show how not only he managed to get that right wall as the opponent crossed, but also how he escapes. Notice, as he makes the edit, he is moving as far left as possible. If he didn't do this, he would have to look at a really awkward angle directly in front of the player to place this other wall. Then he backs up and hits the reset, not trading at all any damage because of good movement, and also not letting the player escape on top of him. He sees with the shot that he took that the player is backing up, so again, looking and seeing what his opponent is doing. He's in, he's out, just like that, and from here, peanut butter slices all day. Next clip is ridiculous, and I want you guys to memorize this pattern that unfolds, as it's common to have your opponent side jump to try to box up like this. But so many things go wrong for him when he does it, because Unknown takes the wall that would have been covered, and been the start of this guy's box. He edits it, and then fully catches him in the box. This guy's so scuffed at this point, and Unknown is right on his back. He's not even looking, trying to edit out of a wall that's not even his. This would not have been possible without taking this first wall. The player would have easily boxed up and been safe, probably been able to heal and go from there. This is why you need to be reading your opponents, not just speed going through this type of play. Just because you get the first double edit does not mean your job is done. Literally, take the shot, but instantly be ready to take the next piece when you go for a double edit. And while you're taking the shot, figure out what your opponent is going to do. On to the next one. Peace control from the bottom works just as well. This whole time, Unknown is ensuring he can't get blocked by placing walls after his cone or floor that he's going to edit through, and then also looking to see how his opponent is moving. This guy was going to place a floor over Unknown's box and maybe continue ramping up, but Unknown takes both pieces fast enough that he doesn't even realize it's not his, and before he even realizes that the double edit is a possibility, he's down and dead. Absolutely ridiculous. Same game, same story, but from defense. This guy gets some early tags and thinks that he can bring the heat onto Unknown, and he almost does, but Unknown's crazy movement gets him out. Watch how he escapes the double edit by instantly recognizing it's coming and completely turning his camera around and jumping away. The other option would be to instantly stares over yourself and take the wall in the same direction so you can edit out, but either one works. From here, the opponent's bad piece control allows Unknown all the control in the world. He should have dove the box and taken the wall that Unknown does because then follows a quick edit and Mongrel Classic, but Notice how even if Unknown doesn't get that wall, he actually has two walls to his sides. If the Mongrel Classic comes, he still has an escape route, including the top. All the while, he's still backing up and he gets across the next barrier. Again, the opponent should have been placing a wall here, editing, and then maybe getting cone four on Unknown for a second time, but instead, Unknown gets the shot, edits, and by then, it's too late for our boy. In the end game, you have to be a little bit more careful. We're still watching the same game here and Unknown is going for more kills since this lobby's dead. Notice how slowly he's approaching this though. This is more an example of nasty angles and pre-firing, but when he slows down and retakes the floor, wall, and stairs before approaching, that's telling. He's acutely aware of what pieces the opponent can take at any time, and replaces those with his own so he can safely move through the box to end up getting this sick cone slide and execute. Let's back it up with Benji to the mid game, and watch two quick examples of the same type of combo that Benji hits. One from below and one from even ground. After this, we'll take a look at the importance of peace control for defense and movement in endgame with Benji, one of the best endgame players as of late. After that, we'll take a look at some of the exercises you can do to practice your peace control. Again, as we pause here, think about what normal players would do after the shot. They would edit again and go for another shot or maybe spray AR. Benji's not satisfied with that and gets a little bit more creative, knowing that this guy, after getting hit, wants to box up. This guy doesn't expect to lose the wall to the guy down on low ground. There's now nothing he can directly do to block Benji, but he still has the opportunity to escape. Benji knows and instantly goes for further peace control and even almost hits that right wall, but he needs to take the shot first. 
He would have gotten the full box if the shot misses or it doesn't finish him off. And in that case, Benji could just back down and then re-add it. Last mid-game fight, and then we'll go into some end-game examples. By the way, oh I know how a lot of these fights are early point lobbies, so we're kind of answering the question of how do you get these ridiculous W key games, but fundamentally this matters. These days, pro vs pro is a battle of who can control the most pieces and then stalemating into an angle fight and weird peaks. Regardless, this fight I like a lot, and it's a great read. He sees this guy go to box up one layer up, and when people do this, the last wall they're actually going to place is the back wall, where Benji is chasing from. This is an easy take opportunity in so many situations, and another reason why you'll see people instantly stares over themselves when trying to get a new layer. You never know when somebody is quick like Benji. I also really, really like how Benji does not overcommit to taking the backside walls, as he's already blocked the main route for this player who's trying to jump up. There's so much more about this fight, especially the angles and right edits, but let's move into some end games. These won't be as flashy or as crazy, and won't all even involve getting eliminations. This first example is simply predicting the possibility of an opponent placing a wall to block. So Benji nullifies that possibility by placing the wall first and then editing. Very simple, but so important. How many times have you had to completely change your plan because somebody places a wall or floor or something else to block your advance? So with this in mind, make a simple rule. If someone has the chance to block you by placing a building piece, place it first. If you're double ramping for height, for example, and somebody's following up on your ramp, make sure you place a floor between and edit through. Further on, Benji's still getting at his own, and on the freeze, sees the opportunity for an impact frag both above, and then the easier one comes from below him. The high amount of multitasking needed in endgame causes people to make tons of mistakes and, and falter on doing basic things, and listening to basic things, such as ensuring that your cone stays your cone. Benji repositions from there and makes the double edit which wouldn't have been possible without the opponent lapsing on his piece control. I do have to say, Benji himself misses the opportunity to cone here, preventing the opponent from ramping over himself and allowing Benji more shots, but he keeps up the pressure and this guy fails to edit and get away from Benji's wonderful right shoulder window peek. This clip is mainly about Benji knowing what he doesn't know. Because he gets an impact on the backside of his own, the timing there is why I think he doesn't go for extra walls and cone, opting to try to get the quick kill rather than taking the risk of time and trading HP. Regardless, when coming out of looting this impact frag, notice how he goes full piece control, editing through everything while he catches up and gets ahead of his own. He does not want to risk getting blocked and being stuck on the backside. But in this case, he doesn't actually know if there's an opportunity for anybody to do that. So he places both wall, cone, and floor, getting the distance he wanted, and then switching layers as he gets the information. Is there people around him who could block? The key part is that he had no info coming out of that impact, right? And he has no clue where and what layers people are on. So he has to do this in order to find the time to get the info he needs to pick his layer. Notice, he gets a bit of info, but needs to stop because of high congestion, then continues. He wants to get as far ahead as possible. Classic endgame fundamentals enabled by wonderful peace control. If he didn't do this sort of thing, he probably would have gotten stuck on the backside of his own, blocked by somebody, and then died. This sequence nets him top five in this game because of how long he survived. So we've talked about what peace control is and seen tons of examples of why and how the pros are really taking advantage of this skill. I wanna cap this video off with how you should be practicing your peace control. There's a couple of things I think you should do. Number one, you should know the building grid by actually practicing box up situations and peak situations. Go into creative and copy the things we just watched Benji and Unknown do specifically. Take that peak we saw Benji do from low ground and then the wall take the edit, the floor, the wall wrap, do it. You need to figure out where you need to position yourself to catch these. Do double edit and before taking a shot, get the walls in to block. You can do this stuff with or without a real person. It'll help. The other thing you can do to help with the building grid is all the craze, but Box fight a ton in creative. It's so helpful for that. Number two, run raw edit courses. I recommend all of Raiders edit courses and to also vary the levels. You wanna expose yourself to different edits and increase your flow, not plan how exactly to get through an entire course. In games, you gotta be able to flow through edits that you have no clue is coming up. Number three, Run edit exercises where you have to place extra pieces. I recommend using Raiders edit practice map number two, which I'll put the code in the description. Run through some of these while placing every single piece that isn't there. Do this for multiple directions and multiple different edits on these pieces. Finally, other than actual game applications, free build or free edit through your own edit courses that you are building while editing through. Things that you see Booga or other players do when they free build. They don't really have to make sense or be anything specific. 
If you need guidance, I seriously recommend watching the video by Raider464 called 100 Different Edits in One Video. I honestly think that this type of free build editing is the best practice for getting your fingers slash movements where they need to be mechanically, regardless of your optimal keybinds. Here's some of my favorites while I close the video out. Piece control is hard. It takes a lot of patience and trial and error to get right. And when you do get it wrong, you get punished hard for it. So learning it is pretty frustrating, but it will make you a better player. So I challenge you guys to think of this concept and practice it so that you get it right. Can't just mindlessly spam because you'll be slowing down overall and wasting a lot of materials doing so. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please like, subscribe, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more content just like this. Peace.